You know, sometimes the equations we're faced with in our math lives uh, have the, the unknown, the variable, actually in the exponent or as the exponent. And so these are sort of exponential equations, which it turns out there are ways of solving. The trick is to try to get that, that exponent unknown down to sort of the ground level with all the other uh, base terms. So let's talk about a general method for solving certain exponential uh, equations. So the first step is to express each side uh, with the same base. And so for example, if I have b to the x equals the same b to the y, then that automatically tells me that the x and the y have to be equal. And again, always with my bases, I'm assuming it's not 0 and not 1, and in fact, bigger, bigger than 0. So, so there's, there's sort of one way of looking at this. The other way is to realize that I can take the log of both sides. Because remember that if I have a equals b, then in fact, the log of a must equal the log of b. And so both of these two techniques can be employed to actually solve much more exotic equalities. Let's take a look at some examples together. So the first one is really exotic. 27 to the x power equals 3 to the x plus 8 power. Why is it so exotic? Well, because notice that the thing we don't know is actually the exponent. Usually, we have things like x to the 2 power, right? Where it's the x we don't know, but the 2 exponent we know. So we have a quadratic. This is not. This is an exponential thing where the unknown is the power. So how the unknown is the exponent. So how do we deal with this? Well, what we try to do is to write everything we see in terms of one fixed base. Well, I see this 3 here. So let me see if I can write 27 as 3 something. Well, we can if we think about it. Because in fact, 27 is 3 raised to the third power. So 27 is actually 3 cubed. So I can replace this with the following equivalent statement. 3 cubed raised to the x equals 3 to the x plus 8. And why? Because 3 cubed is the same thing as 27. Now I can use properties of exponents to know that if I have 3 to a power and I'm raising the whole thing to another power, I multiply these together. And so now I convert the original equation to this equivalent one. But the great thing about this is, you see, now I've got the same base. If I have the same base on each side, then the only way these can be equal is if the exponents themselves are equal. That means that I immediately see that this automatically tells me that the exponent on the left has to equal the exponent on the right. And look what I've just done. Look, no more exponents. Now I can just solve this for x. Subtract x from both sides, and I get 2x equals 8. Divide both sides by 2, and I see x equals 4. And there's the solution. And you can go back and check if you wanted to. Let x equal 4 and plug back into here and see that 27 to the 4th is the same thing as 3 to the, to the 12th. And I'll let you think about that and verify that. But the important thing is that we converted everything to the same base and then set the exponents equal to each other. Let's try another example together. So here's a crazy little example. I've got 7 raised to the x minus 3 power exponent, and that's supposed to equal 350. So how am I going to possibly do this? Well, you know, maybe there's a way of writing 350 as 7 to a power, but off the top of my head, I don't know it. So instead, I'm going to use that second property we talked about, which is just to take the log of both sides. Because then, I can turn this exponent into a coefficient. So if I take the log of both sides, I'll have log, and I'll use the base 10 log. I'll have log of 7 to the x minus 3 equals log of 350. And now I use this all important property of logs that a log of something to a power, that power can become a coefficient out in front. And so I see x minus 3 log 7 equals log 
350. And again, remember those invisible logs mean base 10 everywhere. Now, let me point out that I put these parentheses here. Did you see that? That's because if I would not have put them in, then only the 3 would be multiplied by the log 7. But I want the entire quantity to be multiplied by the log 7, so I've got to put parentheses around the whole thing to lasso it all and multiply it by the log of 7. Okay, now, uh, how am I going to solve this? Well, I want to solve this for x, and so I can now distribute the log 7 everywhere, and I'd see log 7 times x minus 3 log 7 equals log 350. And now what can I do? Well, now I can actually uh, bring this term over to the other side by adding it. So I add 3 log 7 to both sides, and I see log 7 times x equals log 350 plus 3 log 7. And then finally, I can solve this for x by dividing both sides by log 7. And so I see x equals log 350 plus 3, log 7, all divided by log of 7. So, so there's, the, there's the answer. You can actually simplify this uh, using properties of logs if you wanted to. Or if you want to get a numerical value, you can just plug this into a calculator. And we'd see this is approximately 6.01. And so x is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than 6. The important thing is the logarithm allows us to convert an exponent down to a coefficient. And why? Because the log is the inverse function of the exponential function. So it sort of undoes the complexity of the exponent and turns it into something that's on the same playing field with all the other numbers. Cool.